I'm Alice Blackstock. I'm a textile artist from Belfast. I live in London, but I go back to Belfast about every six weeks or so. I work as a globe maker at Bellerby Globe Makers, and I have my own practice, which I am doing from my home studio. I sort of follow God and stuff and faith and sort of looking at times people are saying about, you know, God's time and, you know, things will, I suppose, eventually fall into place. Now that I'm a mum, like, you start to look back at your own parents and, like, how lucky you were and you start to appreciate, like, the stuff that they do for you too. I always, I always liked travelling and I just really, really enjoyed seeing things. And I don't know why, but I did always had a passion to see things, to look at things. I, I will give you advice from the bottom of my heart. Bloom in the pot you're planted in. I was always very, very self-conscious about me and the way I look and the way I dress. And somebody said to me one night, Jenny, bloom in the pot you're planted in, so. This is where I have to be, and this is where I'm gonna be part of making a difference. With my creative practice, my interests are in capturing moments in time, either making them solid through painting or illustration. I guess like being responsive to the things that are going on around me and like observing and standing back and just like watching and maybe noticing the things that other people wouldn't notice. But I feel like a lot of my work is influenced by going back to my hometown and my home city bringing a bit of Belfast to London <laughs> and bringing some of the things that I really love about Belfast, like about the fact that everybody knows everyone and, you know, you can't walk through town without seeing somebody you know or seeing somebody you went to school with and that kind of like familiarity. But I think also in Belfast, there's like a real like genuine kindness and honesty and as my mum would say, like a spade's a spade. One thing that is really important to me personally that I try and communicate through my practice is that the work that I make is inclusive and I think like inclusive is a really big word especially like in this time and what I mean by inclusive is that people can understand it. I really don't want people to feel like they've walked into an art gallery and they're just like oh that was over my head. So doing a illustration or a painting, it's important to me that it can be seen both in like a gallery context, but it can also be understood by my seven-year-old nephew. Graduating from Belfast, I, I really felt like I suffered from the graduation blues. I found that really hard to leave uni because it was just like such a positive experience for me. I loved being at the University of Ulster and I loved that course. I was very keen to keep going as like being an artist in Belfast and like got a studio and all those things were really important to me. And in a way, like, I think that is still really important to me since graduating from the RCA. And similarly, I kind of got a studio and that was something that really helped me to keep going with my creative practice. It's been three years since I graduated from the RCA. I'm becoming a bit more like confident with accepting how I can continue to be creative in London and things like having a studio. It was like, I had to think pragmatically about that. And so having a studio in my flat is something that I would never have considered before because it was like, no, having a studio is this like official thing. It makes me like an official artist. But actually having moved my studio to my home, I really enjoy the time that it gives me to just fit in more life admin. I love having loads of things going at the same time. Having my home and my studio together means that like I can take some pressure off myself in a creative way because I can like have a wash on at the same time. I can have my slow cooker going and um, you know I can be batch cooking. I love that and I love um, dipping in and out and being able to like 
be working on something and then like, you know, nip into, pop the washing machine on. I started working here just after I finished my MA at the Royal College of Art. Moving to London, London's, London's hard work. I think for the first, at least the first year, I kind of fought against London rather than going with it. I was very homesick. And then in the second year of my MA, I was still feeling very homesick. I had to kind of make a decision whether I was gonna stick it out or whether I was gonna go back to Belfast. And for like a number of like personal circumstances, I was like, I have to stick it out and keep going here and see what happens. I think I really like grew as a person, was able to you know, look back on Belfast from a distance and like see different things. Well, it was hard. <laughs> and I think as well, like having this job, it is also my day job. I do quite enjoy this being where my sort of income, this is where my rent comes from. I don't mind like just my work being something that I enjoy. If you feel like you want to keep your creative practice going, then you have to accept that you have to take on other responsibilities in order to do that. And that might involve like, you know, working in a cafe for 30 hours a week. This is a project that is titled Five Conversations. It is five conversations that I had with five inspirational Northern Irish women who have impacted my life. And the conversations that we had were about what got them to this point in their life. I wanted to put these as, like put them loosely as a map, but really they're more like an alternative portrait, putting them down, making them physical by painting them and illustrating them and piecing all these things together to make like a, a visual map as such of their life. So I'm Heather Burgess. I am an embroidery technician at Belfast School of Art and I also have my own business, my own art practice, Rag Button, where I make like little textile products. So before I worked full time as a technician, I was just part time one day a week. That was whenever I set up Rag Button. But at that point, it was a very tough time because it was leaving the other secure job where it was like regular pay and actually just going for like kind of nearly full time with the business. So I did that for maybe five years, I think. A big part of my life is the change of me being diagnosed with thyroid cancer. It'll be 10 years now next year. So that probably would be a big like block in the road that certainly changed a lot of things in life. I had a complete um, whirlwind buying a house there, um, sort of at the start of the year. It ticked all my boxes. It's a really lovely house. It's got lovely light, really huge windows. It's just, yeah, it was fabulous, um, apart from the inside. I have literally been working away since March, stripping the entire house out. So I've kind of said it's like it's stripping out its interior and giving it back its soul. It feels right, it feels comfortable, it feels like yes this is the right place for me, that it has been the right place. I sort of follow God and stuff and faith and sort of looking at times people are saying about you know God's time and you know things will I suppose eventually fall into place. My name is Emma Barrett and I work as a business development executive for um, Henderson Food Service so I went to America and for the first time at 19 and was there on and off for like three or four years and I moved to Vietnam for a while as well and worked over there and I've been just all around Europe and I was in Colombia. I went to Vietnam and then I found out I was pregnant when I was over there so that was a, um, a major <laughs> fork in the road because that just took my life in a completely different direction. Now that I'm a mum, like you start to look back at your own parents and like how lucky you were and you start to appreciate like the stuff that they do for you too. And Alice's mum was like, I'm going to get emotional now, <laughs> um, but like Alice's mum was like another mum to me and my mum was the same and we were very lucky to have that, you know, kind of relationship and those kind of maternal bonds. Um, people don't realise sometimes how hard it is being a mum, but it is amazing though, and I did get very lucky. We just like going places and he's definitely very curious and just loves seeing new things and it's great, like you almost feel like you're getting to see the world from a new perspective when you have a three, soon to be four year old because everything is amazing. You know, we'll get out of the car late at night and he'll be like, mommy, look at the stars. And you don't, you forget to go and look at the stars sometimes, you know, because you're just so busy getting on with, with life and you're suddenly like, yeah, I'm gonna stop and look at the stars for a couple of minutes with you because 
you just don't do it enough, you know. So I think it's just great seeing, seeing the world through their eyes, you know. My name is Mary McCartan. I was, I was born in Newton Art, but I spent most of my time in Belfast. So I initially then went to become a nurse and then I became to be a health visitor. I always, I always liked travelling and I just really, really enjoyed seeing things. And I don't know why, but I did always had a passion to see things, to look at things. I always wanted to go and see these places. So the first place I ever wanted to go to was to go to New York. And we did that there for Alice's 18th birthday. I always wanted to go to Italy because I did history of art. I went to the Aran Islands, a very, very young woman. I went, I went on the parish trip to Lourdes. Lourdes was a great place, absolutely great time. Great fun in Lourdes, great crack, you know, um, and, and just a lovely, lovely thing to do. Just like the whole idea of, of just seeing different places and, and coming from a little place like Banbridge. I just wanted to see an awful lot more of the, of the world. I think I'm very proud of my children. I think I'm proud because I think I did a lot of good. And looking back on it, I did do an awful lot of good. Pe people would come up to me and say, Mary, I remember you, you know, in a nice way. You know, you really, really made a difference to me. I think I have got resilience. I think I'm resilient. I'm Jenny Moore. Working home base, Galwally at the tilts. Whenever new starts come in, I would like to feed them, make them welcome because I was made, made feel welcome and I never forgot it because just now as hard as coming into place on your own, nobody bore me. It's Thursday, I'll be 31 years sober, one day at a time. But I still have to keep doing what helped me because if I stop, I revert back to what I was doing. 12 steps of recovery, play that to my life all the time, proud of being a member of AA, really proud of it. I'm proud that somebody took the time to start an organisation that helped other people. So proud of that. Yeah, that and um, to be sober enough to look after me mum in her last 13 years of life. That's it too, yeah. I feel so much at peace when I hear my music, Irish country music. It's like getting Everything drained out of you, your whole stress and everything goes drained, drains out of you when I hear my music. I, I will give you advice from the bottom of my heart. Bloom in the pot you're planted in. I was always very, very self-conscious about me and the way I looked and the way I dress. And somebody said to me one night, Jenny, bloom in the pot you're planted in, so. So I'm Jacqueline Rogan. I'm an art teacher at Lagan College. I'm in my 25th year of teaching. I'm also a head of year and I work with sixth form. I'm from a big family and we're very well grounded. My parents allowed us to explore life and allowed us to be who we wanted to be. I'm a child of the troubles. I witnessed things, I was involved in different things that have happened, you know, explosions and things. That really impacted me as a young person and I just felt something has to change. You know, something needs to change. And you see what's going on around the world and you do make connections and you sort of say, well, what was happening here? So I went to art college, uh, did my degree, did a master's, and then took a couple of years out. And then I did my PGCE. I subbed for a couple of months in different schools. And then I was offered to work in Lycan College. The ethos of Lycan College, integrated education, my background, and I just thought, this is where I have to be. And this is where I'm going to be part of making a difference. Well, I do love to travel. I love, I just love beaches. And um, I feel very at peace uh, walking along the beach and going into the water and whatever. You always remember what you've, what you've experienced and whatever you experience is part of who you are. And it's something that um, I think it makes you stronger. I think the thing that they all have in common for me is that I have enormous respect for them and I feel very honoured that they're part of my life and they're part of my past but through these maps in a way like they're also part of my future and it's been amazing to reconnect with them and to have them as part of my life again so I think that's the that's the link for them for me. <laughs>